Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Monterey's Magical History Tour with Tim Thomas at the Monterey Public Library. Um, today, we got a special program, Tales from Hippie High, <laughs> and um, we will be getting started. So just a few uh, ground rules. Um, I do ask that if everyone can mute themselves uh, just to kind of help limit distractions during the presentation. Um, and then if uh, any questions arise, please feel free to put them in the chat or um, at the very end, we'll have time for some question and answering, some stories. Um, so we'll open the floor up after that. But um, at this moment, Tim, I turn it over to you. Thank you, Sean, and welcome everybody to another edition of Monterey's Magical History Tour. In fact, Sean, I think today is the one year anniversary we started this program. It um, is. And so um, we're taking a little detour today. We're going back in my own history. Um, and uh, I, it all started because of Chris Marr, who was uh, contacting me. Oh, I guess back in January it was, and I have to honestly admit, when I first got the email, I said, who the heck is Chris Marr? <laughs> and then I remembered, he actually came to see me give a lecture over uh, in Monterey about Japanese abalone fishermen. Uh, so I was really impressed, and he got together this sort of class reunion of the old community centered high school. We used to refer to it as Hippy Dippy High, or at least I did, and which actually, and I never realized until that, until we had that reunion and began to think about it, how important that school was to my life. I literally do what I do today because of that school, how important all these folks were that were uh, to me uh, growing up and driving me into that direction. So I thought this would be a perfect program for this because really it's very historic. As I understand it, Community Center High School was the first real public alternative free school in the United States at that time. It was all sort of, I guess, the idea of Dr. Terry Deal, who I was fortunate enough to be able to track down. And he's going to be here with us today. And, and, and Chris is going to be sort of my co-partner to today's program. So Chris, I'm going to hand it over to you a little bit. Maybe you can talk a little bit about some of all that stuff. Well, thanks, uh, Tim and uh, and Terry and everyone that's joined us. I, I was telling Tim, I still think of him and T Tegmeyer as the boys. I don't know if you guys <laughs> remember, but they always had some filmmaking project or whatever going on. And of course, no one's a kid anymore, but uh, it was good to run into him again. So just a little bit of background. Yeah, in, in my job, um, I'm fairly flexible. So um, the last few years during COVID, uh, my wife and I have been spending a couple of months in Pacific Grove, and it just happens this year while I was down there. And I've stayed in touch with a few of you folks over the years. Uh, some are uh, less visible as far as social um, media, but um, and it just popped up on, I think, the PG High uh, Facebook page. And it was the 50th reunion. And I thought, well, damn, it's our 50th reunion in, in 72. And it turns out, the, as many of you know, the commencement program actually lists our graduating class for 72, the first graduating class. So I looked at it and I saw 13 names there. Um, turns out two uh, have passed on, but I said, you know, the other 11, I can do this. So we managed, managed to contact six folks, including a few who made, made it from outside the area. Sheila and I had planned on getting together in PG anyways. Uh, Phyllis Garcia flew down from Bend. So we actually had, it wasn't a reunion, I call it a meetup. But um, I think everyone approached it with a little trepidation as, as Tim said, but I think as all of you know, because we're of a similar demographic, at our age, we don't think as much about what's ahead as what got us here. And I think once we got together as a group, it was really intriguing how many paths all of us took and what a unique undertaking we were part of. So it was after that dinner that uh, I talked to Tim and I said, do you think we could track down Terry Deal? I said, I've seen some things about him online, but I bet if we could, I, he could tell us a lot about how this idea came to be and so on. Tim didn't seem to think that would be a challenge. And sure enough, uh, we spoke with Terry a few weeks later and we've been sharing information and looking forward to this day. So I think with that, Tim, uh, with your okay, uh, do you want yep. to turn it over? Dr. Deal. 
Well, I am just thrilled to be here. I, all of you are looking pretty young and snappy, and I'm kind <laughs> of getting to the point of looking old, but that's the way it goes. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that I uh, am really looking forward to is meeting, meeting all of you again, because uh, you were such a, an important part of my life. And um, I just, I have been relishing the opportunity for quite a while now. Oh, by the way, I before I uh, before I got, came here, I I wrote a history of our uh, first year, mm -hmm. and it was published. And I want to make sure that I get all the addresses of you, so I can uh, send you a copy of at least my uh, interpretation of what we were what we did that year, which was absolutely astounding. I agree. Great, Barry. Barry, Tim and I will ha have a pretty complete email list and anyone who doesn't think we have their, uh, their information can email it to Tim or myself. I'm M-A-R-R-C-J at iCloud.com. So we'll help you with that. So Terry, why don't you tell us how you even came up with the idea of starting this, this school? When I was uh, when I was a kid, I was in trouble all the time, and I hated school. And it, uh, the school just uh, did no more than give me a pain in the butt. And mm -hmm. so I kind of decided at some point that I was going to make a, a better option for other people, and that's uh, exactly what we put together. And uh, you were part of that very noble exper experiment that first year and, and afterwards, of course. But that first year, we really uh, plowed some very interesting, unique history. And it's, it's uh, when I read this uh, on, before I got here, uh, I am just so tickled to see all of you because all of you were a, a major part of that. Terry, maybe you can explain, because we had a conversation earlier, um, this just didn't appear, and it wasn't a matter of you going to the superintendent, Bill Carey, and saying, I have this idea. You actually had, this idea had to be pitched to the school board, and they had to be convinced to go ahead with it. Why don't you give us a little bit of that backstory on how you got well, this? I, absolutely. You know, we, we put that, that idea together, and the school board didn't, didn't buy it. And uh, one guy, one of the board members said, well, we won't, it won't work, but we'll try it anyway. So that was what uh, kind of got, got us launched, which was not the nicest thing I've ever seen. And uh, one, one, of the, one of the people just said, it's not gonna work. And so as it, as it started out, if any of you can remember back, that was a pretty rough beginning. Yeah, you know, we really struggled to kind of come up with the idea for that, uh, for that school. We all did it together, but in, in terms of the, across the country, most uh, schools like uh, the Community Center High School didn't make it. They, they uh, flushed down the drain and we were one of the first to uh, really make it through and great style. Right now, that it's it's um, at, in Pacific Grove, it still exists, but it's a shadow of its former self. And one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to get on my high horse and see if I can go down there and kind of uh, kick it in the butt a little bit, because uh, it's the history is all there. They just have to kind of get get back and uh, and lean on it, uh, lean on it again. I don't think most of them even know that it, it happened the way it happened. That first year, we we did magic. It was uh, and afterwards, of course, that magic continued. But I am uh, I, I'm one of the things I want to do is to write up where we are now, and to kind of continue the story. Because I think for all of us, there's still a history here to be, uh, to be produced. So one of the things that I want to uh, share with you is, can we find a way to cooperate and produce uh, a, either an article or a book that would kind of get, uh, get out to people the magic that we were able to produce? 
it's uh, it's all of you and of course all of me and my heart and soul is still in that, still in the school. Terry, the, the premise, um, and I think we all, because of our experience ourselves and with our kids with education is it's still pretty much focused on uh, a track where people go off and get degrees, four-year degrees or advanced degrees in college, that there's, unfortunately, there isn't the focus on people that choose different career paths, uh, the trades or people who, for whom socialization is important. That was a key part of this whole thing. Um, we pointed out when we talked earlier that I, I see a lot of my friends here came from single parent families. And for them, the, the whole familial experience of CCH was a key part of kind of growing up and, and learning to assimilate, you know, becoming socially conscious about things. Uh, I, I don't know if it was in this high school, but, but Heather, you and I went to the People's Park marches and, and Peace marches. And there's a lot of stuff going on then amongst the more progressive educators that would probably get you thrown in jail today. But I think there was a focus on engaging the world around you, not only learning in the community, but learning what was out there uh, uh, in, in, the, in the real world. And, to, and, and part of that is that when they first started the, the school, it was the students who literally hired the other teachers. And I was just astounded by that. Here I was, this 17-year-old, uh, 16-year-old kid. <laughs> and I just imagine their looks on these uh, prospective teachers' faces when they came and looked at all these long-haired kids and, uh, and <laughs> who were going to interview them. I'm wondering, Terry, how you guys came up with that idea to have the students do that. Well, it seems to me that if you're going to have uh, people teaching you, uh, you ought to have a share in who those people are going to be. And so uh, I just figured that uh, the, the uh, superintendent, the assistant superintendent, they had no idea about who we were, really. And so what we were able to do is to convince those teachers that something magic is happening here. Do you want to, uh, do you want to join up? We had a lot of applicants for those positions. And of course, you know, with, with George and uh, Dennis, we uh, struck gold in terms of uh, people that would be uh, the kind of teachers that we'd like to have. Uh, Tim, you and I were, uh, I guess we were part of that group and some of you others right. were as well at Lighthouse Elementary School where we went through the, the resumes. And I still remember being blown away because one of the applicants was making $10,000 a year as a teacher. Like, whoa. <laughs> Um, but uh, I, I think, you know, it's interesting because you told the story, Terry, of actually Dennis Lindbergh was really more of the student's choice. Uh, there were actually quite a few names that these folks would know from the high school that wanted to come over. But um, and, and I asked Tim about that later. And he said it was really Dennis's youth that it was younger. And he thought we could he could relate to us better. So that was a real loop, leap of faith, leaving a lot of those staffing decisions up there. Well, I think, yeah, they, they, because Dennis did, he was, he was fresh out of uh, Stanford and uh, had a lot of ideas, of course, the geodesic dome being one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. But, and then we had uh, the anchor, uh, uh, George. And George, of course, was one of the uh, real salt of the earth people, uh, bless his heart. And uh, then I, I kind of, uh, sailed in because I came with the I came with the the the, uh, the, uh, the school already. You, uh, people didn't get a chance on me, but I I did my best to um, earn the respect of all of you. You did that. So I know, uh, Chris, that there are a number of former students uh, with us today, and if you guys want to chime in, please feel free to unmute yourself and chime in. I can, uh, I can start if you would like. Yeah, uh, please. For those of you who either don't know me or don't recognize me, uh, that's okay. I often don't recognize myself. My name is, <laughs> <laughs> My name is, uh, is David Montgomery, and uh, I was in that first class. I graduated in 1971, and... Uh, I think there were three or four 
uh, graduates from the, the, the first class. Uh, my story concerning Terry is, is pretty personal and I don't know how much of it, uh, Terry, you remember, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll throw it out there as best I can. You, your idea began as a rumor there was, I, I was finishing up my, my junior year at, at PG High, and uh, there was a lot of talk that was going around among the people that, this, that there was this new program that was coming. And uh, if you wanted to be a part of it, you know, you had to, you had to interview for it. Uh, there were only gonna be a, a small selection of students and they were gonna be coming from you know, every, uh, every class that was at the high school at the time. Anyway, I had my interview with Mr. Deal and uh, he and I chatted and uh, he uh, got, we got to know each other a little bit. And, he, and I, one of the things that I said to him, as I recall, was something to the effect that I didn't really think that, that high school was that important to me that I had other important things that I, I needed to take care of. And uh, he asked me, like what? And I said, well, I, I need to uh, prepare a case for myself to uh, change my draft status uh, uh, for uh, a conscientious objector. And I, I needed to accomplish that. And I I wasn't really sure that I, I, I could do that and go to school too. And Terry said something that was absolutely life-changing for me. He said, well, we might be able to help you with that, <laughs> but you gotta stay in school and you gotta graduate. And that, I, I think that's something at that very young age that was, had a remarkable impact on me. I, uh, I was able to spend a year not only doing my regular high school uh, work with, you know, sciences and language and, you know, all the stuff that you study in, in, your, in, in high school, but also I was able to get together with uh, attorneys and peace groups and you know, the people that were, uh, you know, advocating, uh, you know, a, a, an end to the Vietnam War. And uh, this is a very long time ago, but uh, I was very fortunate that that was a part of my curriculum for that last, that last year of high school. And it, uh, like I said, it, it had a very profound effect on me. And uh it changed my life and uh, it's wonderful to see you, Terry. And at this point, I would like to say thank you. You changed my life. Well, and I would, I would return that and thank you for being the person that would be honest about what it was that you wanted to do. Because that was the whole purpose of the school. And why, why should people work on stuff that doesn't matter to them when they can, they can have a chance to work on something that really does. So I'm the, thank you very much. I'm just uh, so tickled to hear your story. Yeah, it's uh, it's like I said, it was, a, I have a, a good friend of mine who lives here in Portland, Oregon with me, who uh, Chris knows, a man by the name of Ken Brooks. And uh, he was a art teacher. And, uh, you know, we, we often talk about the impact educators have in your life they they absolutely help to shape the type of human being that you end up becoming and i can sure say that about this experience it was life-changing well and that that is what education ought to be about yeah you know it, it, it's, there's so much of the stuff that i that tell me that was just irrelevant as, as a uh result of that, I became a, a problem. And as a matter of fact, the other day at my one of my alma maters, uh, I was introduced as the only person they'd ever known who had ridden in the front and the back of a police car. Because I served uh, uh, part of my uh, life as a uh, police officer. And uh, 
that whole idea about having a life changing experience is you, you put something to your heart and soul into it rather than just going through the motions. Yeah. And there's too I, much I, of that I, that goes on in our schools today. I sure would also like to, uh, to raise my glass to, uh, to Dennis and to, you know, God bless George Savo. Holy, God holy bless. What a, what a remarkable man he was and what a wonderful teacher. You know, he just, I, I learned so much from George, not just about the stuff, the classes that I went to with him, but just about life in general. And his, his, his whole family was just wonderful, wonderful folks. George is salt of the earth. And uh, right, matter of fact, right now, as we speak, we're surrounded by Joni Savo paintings <laughs> that we uh, picked up uh, when we went down to, to visit George and, and Joni. And those are just uh, some of our most favorite uh, mementos. I miss <laughs> George a lot. Yeah, me, me too, me too. Okay, I, I don't want to monopolize the time. Let's let, let's hear from other folks, please. I was trying to one thing that I actually had forgotten about until you, David, you started talking about your experience too. But part of the part of the school courses, we also created our own curriculum, but we still had to satisfy those state uh, mandates. And I know through my social studies program, I actually I brought worked really hard. It took you about six months and I brought Dick Gregory to come speak to Monterey. I mean, what other school would let me do that kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> and I, got, I wrote the guy a letter in, in Chicago. <laughs> that was a good thing. That's so cool. I think I attended that speech, Tim. I'm sorry, right. MPC? I think I yeah, attended MPC, that speech. that's right. That's yeah, right. I did too. Mm -hmm. Cool. So quick question: What was what? What years were these? For those who are, are not familiar, uh, what years were you guys attending? 1971 and 70 was when the school started. I think and 72 was there. Yeah, 72 was the first actual listed graduating class. But yeah. I think Tim, uh, Tim's right in. In 71, I think we're doing a lot of work on hiring and, right. and doing some initial uh, planning. Um, and uh, I'm going to say by 72, we were finishing up the, the dome and we were, that was kind of up and going by then. But um, I think the dome was really more in use after that. That's, yeah, the that's first so year, the first year we act, the school actually was held in the old office building up above the Hector G. Schmidt's Purity Bakery in downtown Pacific Grove. Uh, I remember, remember that. I love that building. And that was from the building is still there. So that's what's the good part. And I'll bet and you I'll a bet plaque you. on that door. There should be a plaque on the building. <laughs> so. Well, and I'll bet you those rooms are still the same color. Oh, I'm they were. <laughs> <laughs> Orange and purple. <laughs> Crazy. Is this mic working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Terry, I, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with me, I don't know if um, my camera is, is necessarily doing a whole lot here. Um, You're looking good. Thank you. This is Kent Tegmeyer, Tim's um, cohort and, and um, crimes of uh, the, <laughs> the Community Centered High School Film Club. That's that, right. <laughs> my gosh, Tim, it was wonderful to see you at the restaurant. And uh, yeah. likewise, Terry Deal, I, I, I was so shy. Uh, I was the class of 73. Thank you guys for including me in your 50th, my 49th and first ever um, uh, graduation uh, alumni kind of get together. So Chris, thank you for reaching out that way. But Terry, if I do nothing else on this call, I want to thank you and just say, God bless you, Dennis and George. The impact that you had on my life was a direct trajectory in me going into a lifetime of television broadcasting. I went to 46 Garden Court. Dennis carted me out there as my personal Uber. 
to K-Wave and I got <laughs> into learning. Um, I started there when Ray Conniff was doing Beatles. And by the time I left um, that FM station, 96.9 in Monterey, uh, the Beatles were doing Beatles on K-Wave. So the, 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 the move into television came because the two, two companies were in the same building. I never looked back. I was in television in the master control room and then cameraing uh, the newscasts. I was fixing a bench tech, fixing the, uh, the gears as uh, equipment would be dropped or whatnot, you know, making a Frank and Kluge camera out of, here's a lens from that one, here's a tape drive from this one, here's, and it, this all came from you, Terry, opening the door for something that I was fascinated with, and that was electronics. And uh, this goes generationally like a ripple uh, in a pond because in the various television outlets that I have been worked, uh, working at, 46 Monterey, under number of call letters, KCCN, KION, KMST, I worked at KSBW, the big black box over on John Street, that uh, Channel 8, that, ooh, that was real TV. I was there when Dan Green uh, just started. He came in six months after me. And the, the amazing thing is that vision that you saw that I, I was able to do or what you believed in me, um, I, I became a teacher as a, as a new employee at the TV station. I would train the master control room techs. I would train the news camera videographers. And then that led to five years at Monterey County Office of Ed as the studio engineer, where I was teaching high school kids lighting cameras, mics. And then who would have ever thought just <laughs> last year, I got my teaching credential and I was teaching at Pajaro High School of all times, COVID. So here was our cameras not a real camera, but my God, a 4K camera in, inside of a, a silly cell phone and editing on uh, Weebly, uh, a website manager, a web creation uh, system. So I just wanted to say real, real quick, I mean, I'm, I'm really talking up a storm here. I, I am so grateful to you, Terry, for starting Community Centered High School the fond memories of uh, Hector de Schmidt and one of the students that wanted to be a baker went into baking. I forget the guy's name. Uh, we had a student that wanted oceanology. He went to Hopkins Marine Station and took his yeah. classes there. My classes were K-Wave 96.9 and KMST. Uh, the, the engineer took me in there and climbing towers and hooking up microwave dishes and setting up uh, cameras. Just this was directly due to your creation of this school. Um, and I just thank you. Thank you very much, Terry. Well, you know, Ken, as you were talking, I just, my mind went back and I was, I was thinking of you uh, and that story because it, it's one that I, it's one that I still cherish that uh, you were headed for good things. It, it was, it's an amazing thing to think um, how the broadcast industry works. And Monterey Salinas is market 126, 24, 25. It fluctuates. Um, Chris Nance was uh, a student that was in your grade class. He ended up going from KMST to KCBS Los Angeles. Um, that's real rare for a skinny high school kid to, to just blast off into weather reporting in Los Angeles television. Uh, but that, that opportunity, Chris Marr, oh my God, um, he palled around with my brother Todd and then they let me uh, come and listen to them jam in the, in the garage, you know, all of these musicians <laughs> over the years. The various bands, uh, but you're 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 a gold mine to me, sir, Terry. And uh, oh my God, George would drag us over to his house and teach us how yes. to crack an egg and make an, right. a, an omelet and let's do French bread. You know, like just oh, I can I can just see him. I can see him doing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, instead of a, a little tap 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 
tap, tap, tap. And he said, just crack the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's George. Yeah. yeah. So Terry, can I ask you, when the school first started, what kind of reaction were you getting from, from the from the school district and from and the teachers of Monterey High, uh, Civic Oak High School? We, uh, I was getting killed. And uh, I don't know if you remember, we, uh, I went to the Rotary Club to, uh, mm -hmm. to get, uh, give the school a chance to get some, uh, get some uh, uh, notoriety. And I forgot a couple of things that the, the students that I went with had long hair <laughs> and uh, three of them didn't salute the flag. So when I got back, when I got back to the uh, to the school, there was a note uh, from uh, the superintendent, see me immediately. And uh, he said, uh, "I don't know what you're doing, but you sure don't know what you're doing." And uh, <laughs> and that that uh, so he he was be, he was he was forward, but we got a lot of flack. An awful lot of flack. I met with each of the uh, board people to kind of uh, trying to quiet down the uh, the notoriety a little bit, but it, it was um, it was dip and tuck uh, throughout that whole year. But at the end of the year, we pulled it off, and the board voted uh, unanimously to continue the school. And one of the uh, one of the, the guys on the board who uh, worked at, uh, he was a watchmaker. And he, he said, I want you to know, all of you to know that I voted against the school. And today I'm voting for it. And what schools need is a little more uh, notoriety and love. Mm -hmm. And so that was, it was rough though. Uh, it, uh, I got a lot of calls for my, uh, for my skin. So um, let, let, I'm going to call out Sheila here, uh, who went on to become a nurse. I just remember, I don't remember any biology classes there at CCHS, Sheila. I do remember you hauling your flute around, just like I remember Heather and her violin. <laughs> um, but obviously, you both went into kind of health professions. But for those of you who uh, maybe went on to um, traditional academic environments, I don't know about you, I did struggle for about a year. Um, and I wouldn't exchange my experience at CCHS for anything, but, you know, at least in my case, I didn't get the type of, of structured environment that, that kind of transitioned easily into a college environment. But, you know, I figured it out. It actually, you know, things worked out great. I ended up uh, graduated summa cum laude, so um, no harm, no foul there. But I'm wondering about, uh, Sheila, you or other people that have some ideas that went into more uh, traditional academic environments. If was it a struggle coming out of CCHS, or was it easy to adapt? Uh, I would say that CCHS was was probably the least of my my issues. And if anything, it gave me an incredible amount of initiative regarding learning, and that you could design your own program and uh, take off in whatever direction moved you was worth a lot to me. I had done. I'm going to back up a little bit here. I had done a lot of reading because my mother was very interested in educational theory about, um, and this is before I'd moved to Pacific Grove, so Summerhill in Britain, uh, the, the writings of John Holt. And so there was a, a lot of ferment in the educational establishment prior to me moving to California. And then when I was able to come to California, I didn't go both years, just to the, the second year, I was totally turned off to academics in general, it, it, um, at least the formality of it. I was uh, intensely interested in learning, but I felt stupid when it came to math and science. And so I uh, put those out of my consciousness entirely and concentrated on the arts and literature, which is was more my strength. Um, and I actually became a nurse because I was looking after a, years, a few years of being a waitress and trying to be a back to the lander, which I had no economic resources for. I looked around small town Arizona where I was living and said, I need to get a job skill. I could become RN, I guess. I had never even visited anyone in the hospital. But I, you know, as, as Heather said in one of her, her messages, I kind of believe we could do anything. And so I challenged the uh, um, biology and chemistry classes, although I, 
some of that at MPC in my two years later there. And it didn't do well in them, but I was motivated with nursing school. I challenged the classes for that uh, two-year community college program, got into it, got through things and realized that I had a lot of um, motivation and I just had to apply myself. So that's what I did. I will say that my lack of high school geometry, which is more the fault of my first high, high school in Arizona, um, because nobody ever said I sh would possibly need high school geometry. I fought with the, the University of Wisconsin here in, in Madison because it would not accept me without high school geometry. And so I still don't have a, a bachelor's degree because of the lack of high school geometry part, which is kind of a funny thing. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, I was able to get by and learn on the job and um, make my way within a lot of things I, you know, ideally I wish that I'd had a little bit more academic background and I probably would have gone on and got, gotten a master's degree, um, but, you know, life took me in other directions. And one thing that CCH, H, CCHS gave me is uh, this eclectic interest in the world around me and my initial arts in, in, uh, orientation has allowed me to, to connect with all sorts of different things in the world besides just the more straight and narrow um, path of nursing. So one other thing while I have the microphone is I uh, the timeline as I remember it was that this would have started in in terms of classes above the bakery in 1970 fall uh, summer uh, and so gone uh, 70, 71 um, above the bakery S summer of 71 I know that people were building the dome uh, in the back of the junior high, and that was a credit class for those who were able to participate. I was very, my dad made me go to Europe, which is, <laughs> I resented it because I didn't build that dome, by gosh. And then uh, we were there in the dome as well as the trailer in 71, 72, when I graduated. So, so anyway, thank you. <laughs> so I should point to that there was a part of the program we had an archaeology class. Um, that was run by Don Howard, who was uh, an old, uh, young guy then. And uh, it was CCHS, along with Don Howard, that discovered the walls, the old Monterey Presidio. That was a big news story then. Still is a big story, actually, in Monterey, in the history world, anyhow. Well, one of the things that, uh, that I found out was I called around to... Uh, all the universities and colleges that I could and asked them, would a student who came out of this kind of an environment be accepted here? And uh, they all agreed that it would be a plus. That having that kind of an experience would, would prepare them for a collegiate uh, degree. Um, and so we were able to kind of thwart the idea that you can't get, graduate from the community center high school and go to college, uh, that's not true. And if you remember David Loop, who's now one of the best uh, Porsche mechanics in the, uh, in the area, uh, he went one year, he decided that uh, he got in, no problem, but he just didn't want, want that kind of a life. But I think that, that the CCHS really did prepare uh, people for the academic world, and uh, they had uh, they had a lot of respect for that. They being the other institutions. Stephanie, I see your mute button's off. Did you want to jump in at all? Any, I'd like to that? share a little of my experience, if I might. Please. Um, I had grown up in Pacific Grove, but was moved to Hawaii by my parents when I was 10 and had done five years in, in public school in Hawaii by the time I came back to Pacific Grove in 1971. So I did my freshman year of high school in Hawaii. Um, then I did my sophomore year of high school in uh, PGHS and I floundered at both places because I just didn't ever really feel like I quite fit in. and the, the curriculum wasn't quite what I needed. And I had become that nerdy little girl that hides in the library or, or playing classical piano or, or hanging <laughs> in the ballet class. 
and, uh, and what I needed help with was socialization. I needed to learn how to talk to people. And, and that's where community school really, really was helpful for me. Um, Paul Coletti was the one who got me talking and I have never, ever stopped. <laughs> 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 and also, I've uh, and and I didn't have grown-up teachers that were really my role models. Um, I worked with John McClary in the photography program, and that probably I learned the most there. That was influential into my life out into the future. But I learned from the other students. You know, I I I played guitar all day with with Helene Swanson's and Kyle Kovalik and played something other than classical music, which was great. And I play in a rock and roll band to this day. <laughs> and I did, I did the the kitty matinee with with Tim and and kids and learned about <laughs> production and and got some some beginnings of photography training that went along with the stuff I was learning from John. And when community school started to change again the next year, I realized, you know, I had found a, a student home, but it was going to change. And I freaked out and graduated and went on to MPC. And I had no difficulty transitioning into MPC other than there I was once again. I was 17 and didn't really feel like I quite fit in with all these older kids. But academically, there was there was no issues at all. And I went on to eventually get a, a bachelor's degree. Um, I have a certification in city planning and land use, um, land use planning. Um, I'm retired from a career in city planning and run a consulting business today. Mm -hmm. So the community school is what got me back on track and through the process with my head on straight. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. I'll speak up. Um, I'm Danielle Martin, and I had been going to Carmel High School, and I went through all the Carmel schools, essentially, and I realized somewhere in my second year of Carmel High School that I was really disappointed. I was disappointed in... Um, I felt like I was a memorization monkey. And I think the Carmel schools had kind of a brain trap, it felt like, that I wasn't really ever knowing that there was something like dance being taught at Carmel High School or ceramics. I was in these advanced this or advanced that. So I had heard of the alternative high school in PG and I took a risk. I felt like it was a huge leap to leave the traditional world and all my friends were going on and planning, you know, UC Berkeley or wherever. Um, so I was really interested in psychology and I used the community-centered high school to work with Ron Cobley and John Crickman and I got to be a volunteer at the Aquarian House. Um, I got to do ceramics with someone there in Pacific Grove, I've forgotten her name, and it was like this wonderful, terrifying year for me. I got to sort of the bravado of making new friends and being in a community that I could bicycle around in PG compared to in Carmel, you'll have all these different neighborhoods that you can't really get to unless you have a parent driving you. So I thought PG really had it together. So I'm sorry I wasn't there for 71 and 72. Um, and I think, you know, these things are a splash. I remember at the first part of the 73 school year, a group of us were invited to the high school proper and the principal kind of quizzed us about why we had chosen community-centered high school versus the more traditional academic realm. And I think, you know, it, it could have been both. I think our traditional high schools could have had these tracks that people could have done two or three periods of more, um, self-directed, create your own program for education. 
and they just hadn't really tried that. So for sure, I had George Savo, I had Dennis Lindbergh. I did some English stuff with Paul Coletti, um, kind of in the hanging out with people there in the trailer. Um, a few <laughs> of us wondered about building a deck to add on to the trailer. So Gary Fox helped us design a deck. Phyllis Garcia and I had some, I don't know, bake sales, rummage sales to raise the money to buy the wood. And we built a deck. So I kind of got to see how all of us sort of had some chances to even improve our current world there school, let alone be grounded by these great humans. And then I'll say, I only went to Community Center High School for one year. I already had enough credit. And I, I'm kind of sorry I didn't linger another year, just sort of cultivating my, uh, I don't know, trusting, trusting the time to be there. But anyway, I ended up going to MPC for two years. And then I heard about another interesting interdisciplinary college called the Evergreen State College up near Olympia, Washington in Seattle. So another leap for me to leave California and not go to some kind of traditional university or college. I was really interested still in psychology, but I was interested in wellness. <laughs> and I wasn't sure how that got defined in all the psychology programs. I tried to you know read about UC Irvine or Irvine and um, anyway at Evergreen there was a program called inter it was called psychological growth verbal and nonverbal approaches so I joined that for two years and I think you know both parts of me meshed I can be really academic I can do the reading and answer interesting questions and generate essays and I also feel like ultimately I ended up with a degree in improvisation. So I think more of us should sort of uh, take these leaps and here I am 66 years old and I still feel like I'm kind of on the edge of always wondering what else will enhance my life and going for it. So I thank you, Terry Deal, and I thank the original teachers and the original students, all of you, for you know, helping get this thing up and running. I'm really thank, glad. Thank you. What a wonderful story. Yeah, way cool. Okay, over and out, guys. Someone else speak up while there's time. <laughs> I just wanted to remind you, it was Evelyn Penprace that taught pottery. Oh yes, thank you, Evelyn. She had a sweet dear background or backyard studio. I remember, yes. Yeah, and I don't know why I never went back and visited or found out how she was or, <laughs> but loved her. The way well, she taught us. George became an amazing potter. I mean, George kept, you know, he ended up teaching, brought some wheels down to the high school that someone told me at night they were going to adult classes down at CCHS. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Heather, what, as long as you're on the microphone, why don't you, do you have any other thoughts about your experience there? Nothing really deep, but <laughs> I um, went to MPC. Well, I remember them saying that I had enough credits to graduate. And I said, but I'm really not ready. I'd rather yes. stay another year. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to MPC, and I remember one teacher kind of saying to the class, what is the matter with all of you? I was a music, taking a music class. And um, I remember thinking, you know, the Vietnam War is raging. That's what's going on with us. You know, there's like this huge thing going on, which is kind of true today with global warming and everything going on. That we had a lot of concerns that weren't, that made, the regular high school seem just small and not important. 
Well, that that's as much as I want to say. <laughs> Terry, I, I, you know, I think it's um, with some of the comments, it just strikes me that we took this experience and in ways we didn't don't even understand, except as they come out in stories like this, that we we did change the world. The thing about our generation is we want to change the world. And yes. but we, you know, it depends on how you define changing the world, right? Um, if you, you know, if you just, if you do out, if you go out and do a good person, you change the world. If you, if, if you just do good deeds. Um, but I mentioned earlier for me personally, coming from, uh, uh, a, a household where I was raised by a single mom, um, teacher mentors were very important to me. People like you, George Savo, Steve Pocabla, who many of you know, um, another teacher there, uh, in my case, strong male figure, so I never forgot that. And uh, some of you know, subsequently I became a state senator in Washington. I had a thousand teachers knocking on doors for me who helped me get elected. I shared my story about the importance of education and in society, it's, teachers can't be, right? If, if, if your primary goal is to make sure kids take tests and get educated to tests, you can't be the kind of mentor that, that you signed up to be an educator for. Steve Pocab or Paul Coletti and George Savo. And I just have to say, so I made that a priority when I was a legislator. And today, Washington has the highest paid uh, teachers in the United States. 73,000 a year is the average. That's so, wonderful. So, wow. So, but what I want to say is that's because of Terry Deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that is because of all of you. Uh, that's what I would say. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just uh, sit here and I, I, I'm getting up in years th these days. But to hear all these, hear all these wonderful stories just knocks years off my age. As far as I, I, I feel, you're, you're all just majestic. <laughs> Jane, do you want to jump in here? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to say your name isn't really familiar to me. Do you want to jump in or? You need to turn off your mute button if you want to say something. Are you still on mute? Uh, there. I'm I am I am the mother of Blair Everett, and that's why I was oh. here. Um, I, I don't really have anything to say, although I, I guess I'm really very grateful to Terry. He um he took an interest in Blair. Um, I remember one summer he got her a um, scholarship to an art institute somewhere up in Northern California. Um, I, anyway, th I, that's why I'm here. Well, say hi to Claire. I know she had a conflict, but she's going to watch the tape and it was great. Tell her we all enjoyed reconnecting with her. Um, via email and hopefully in person at some point. But can, yeah. I, can I ask a question? Jane, as sure. a mother of a student, how did you first feel about about uh, Blair going into the school there? I I was very pleased. Um, she was interested the whole time she was there. She was engaged, um, and so as her mother, I I was very pleased at what was happening. Good. Yeah. Blair was was very very special. And I think the opportunity to put her in the uh, the Athenian school for a summer was uh, one of the, the uh, wonderful things that I could do. And I think that she responded well to that. So uh, Blair has a special part of uh, a uh, place in my heart and be sure and tell her. I will. Thank you. Is there anybody else out there has any questions? You, you don't even have to have been a student. Maybe you have a question about what, what we're talking about today. Yes. I just wanted to say one thing that uh, I joined this because I wanted to find out about the community high school because I went to regular high school. And I also wanted to say hello to Coach Neal uh, <laughs> after all these years. Uh, he was one of the coaches. I think. Did you teach business? I'm trying to remember what you did. Anyway. Well, when I first came to uh, Pacific Grove, uh, they put me in teaching a business class, uh, and I'd never done that before. 
So uh, that only lasted uh, one year. Then I moved into the social studies area, which is where I uh, came from. But I would have done anything to get into Pacific Grove High School. Oh, yeah. It, it was, even though I was there for two years, it's just a, um, this is a great program that you uh, had the opportunity. And Pacific Grove High School was a very special high school in a lot of ways. I spent two years there and it, uh, experiences I had to find a lot of things. I became an educator. Well, my parents were educators, but, but that was very important because I had my first experience teaching as a tutor. And that was wonderful experience. Uh, first time I ever got fired from a job, but that was okay. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to get fired once or twice. Yes, yes, but that was great, the community-based program. I, I mean, that, that just wonderful. And at that time, you may want to know, over at Monterey Peninsula College in uh, 1969, hmm. Lynn Epstein had the free university going. So speaking of <laughs> similar kind of activities were going on, I was very involved in that, the free university that Lynn did in, um, at Monterey Peninsula College in 1969-1970. Well, it just reminded me of, uh, of being in uh, the community center high school, and we had one of the, uh, he was at, at Holman's, and I think he was the, uh, the real Holman guy, and his son started out in the community center high school and he called me in and said uh you know if i if i were running my business like you run your high school they'd fire me uh <laughs> they fired and i said if, if i were to run my school like you run your business they can't me right away <laughs> so there was a, there was a lot of uh, those little episodes that came about as people not understanding what we were doing but I think by the end of the year, they, they kind of got the, got the program. All right. Do we have any questions, Sean, in that chat room? No, no questions. Um, nope. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions or anybody else to say anything else so i appreciate the, the, everybody coming on today really appreciate all the uh, former students from community center high school it's really nice to see you all again after almost 50 it has been 50 years yeah <laughs> and uh for, particularly chris i really appreciate you help, helping put this all together and really you're the guy that really started all this for me so yeah I and, and i i'd like to just jump in because uh i think that what uh, the students, all of you, were able to do is absolutely majestic. And one of the things, I just uh, finished reading an article I uh, 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 wrote about muddling through above a bakery. And it's the <laughs> history of our school in depth. And I think you all would, uh, would enjoy reading that. And I don't know how we, we arrange for that, but um, I, I can get copies to to everybody. And the other thing that I would like to do, if that, if that uh, helps out a little bit, I'd like us to think about writing a book about the things we've heard here this afternoon. All right, uh, here, here. I, I don't know, I don't know if you would be interested, but it would be really interesting to me to spend some time trying to sort through all these beautiful stories and to put them in, in, a, uh, in a way that uh, somebody out there that's trying to, to run a better school might profit from it or some kid who's kind of lost might uh, think that there is some hope some, uh, someplace. And so if any of you are interested, I would be, delighted to do that. And I want to just share one last thing because uh, the first year was pretty rough on me. Uh, just I was going through a kind of a bad marriage and I was uh, getting sick now and then, but uh, the uh, all the group, I don't know if any of you were there, uh, in front of the Board of Education and the superintendent, uh, you gave me a going away present. <laughs> And it was an ounce of hash. <laughs> <laughs> and I opened it. 
I opened it in front of the Board of Education, and they they all said, well, what did you get? And I said, oh, it's, it's, it's so special, I can't share it. <laughs> but it, uh, I do want to tell you, it helped out. <laughs> Terry, uh, Terry uh, well, as some of you know, I'm one of the three people that created the legal cannabis system in Washington. And I kind of shake my head a little bit sometimes, think going back 50 years, thinking, my if I told my younger self back then the stuff that society thought was a great evil uh, <laughs> will someday be, generate a billion dollars in taxes for the state. And, uh, I don't think I believe it. So going back to, um, was that in the book that you sent me that's awaiting my return? Yes. The, the okay. I, yeah, my, it's, it's called the, the, uh, the book is, is uh, about alternative schools, but the, okay. what you want to take a special look at is the history okay. of that first year uh, muddling through above a bakery. So and um, muddling through, muddling I, through. When I return, I'm going to scan that, and then everyone that's on the mailing list, you'll get copies, and um, maybe you can offer some comment there. I guess the way I see this is it would be a shame if some of us, uh, with our paths crossing again, don't treat this as, I mean, I think we need to treat this as one more episode, but to be continued. Uh, I know Terry is down in San Luis Obispo, and some of us have moved around the idea of maybe another meetup in PG, or maybe someone's taking a trip down to um, uh, San Luis Obispo in the next year, but uh, Terry suggested some ways we could connect, and some of you can share your thoughts in a way that uh, would be helpful to this effort Terry's talking about to kind of connect the dots versus our initial experience in education today. I, I couldn't think of a better person, Terry. If any of you Google all the books Terry's written, you know he knows of what he speaks. So I do want to thank you. I want to also want to thank your wife, this Sandy, who I, I think is somewhere in the room. Uh, was she home, really homecoming queen of 1968 at PGI? She sure was. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, of course, I had married a, a flight attendant, and then Sandy and I crossed paths in San Francisco, um, and uh, she wasn't happy, and I wasn't happy, so we both left our current uh, people, and we've been together now for uh, 50 some years. All right. Wow. And we would, we would love to have any of you like to stop by. We live in a, uh, a lot, lot, very large a uh, piece of land that's devoted in large part to grapes. And we love to share our house with any of you that would have, have the chance to come by. I mean, I can't tell you how much this means to me. Great. Uh, cool. All of you. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I will take every one of these stories and, and cherish it for the rest of my life. Well, Tara, I want to say again, thank you so much. You really did change my life as well. And I just appreciate seeing you again after all this time and having you on this program today. Here, here. Thank you. Thanks. I have one last thing to say, and this is actually to Sean Briscoe, who has been working on this program with me for a year. He's actually leading Monterey tomorrow, or at least leading the library tomorrow, and moving up to Oregon to work in the library there. So I wish you luck, Sean, and thank you very much. Hey, can I add one last thing? Yes. The Pacific Rose Community Center High School now is a shadow of his former self. Um, I stopped by, uh, I think about a year ago, and uh, it's now on the uh, one of the elementary school uh, uh, grounds, uh, but they've moved completely away from all these things that we're talking about right now. And if any of you are interested at all, I'm gonna raise some hell. <laughs> and uh, I would be happy to have any hell raisers that, uh, or whatever raisers that uh, can come along with me because we're, we're going to get this fixed. I'm, right. I'm just, uh, uh, I, I've got a, I got a real uh, thing in my craw that I'm going to uh, exercise. Cool. Well, count me in. I'll help out. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you all for sharing those wonderful stories. Uh, it's fabulous to hear. And um, thank you, Terry and Chris, for joining us. Tim, it's been an honor and a privilege to work with you. Thank you, Sean. Um, 
thank you all. And the recording um, will have this up on the library's website uh, soon. And um, thank you all for joining us and just sharing those stories. It's fantastic to see what a wonderful school that was.